are keepers of secrets in Eco. By this time, you know the drill. A single entity monster in the style of Lords of Change. Nakari's faction crams all the spell unlocks late in the tech tree in one group, which makes it easy to keep track of. I think that's why it's given a cost reduction in multiplayer. Well, as a campaign main, what secrets can I reveal? Let's take a look. Recruit for 2,000 gold equivalent in campaign and 500 upkeep. The keeper comes at 7,028 health on ultra, which doesn't feel dramatic. Armor is 15, with a missile parry chance of 20. Physical resistance is 20 also. Leadership is 75, speed is 80, charge speed is 130, which is top tier. Melee attack begins at 60 and is magical attack, with an attack interval of 4 and a large splash target size for a maximum of 8 targets damage, so it's not a giant. Melee defense is 50 default, with weapon strength of 470, split between 115 base and 355 armor piercing, a heavy AP ratio. Charge bonus is 35 and mass is 3500, which is heavy, but I've seen much bigger. This demonic siege attacker inflicts terror, has strider, devastating flanker, and has the bound spells acquiescence and lash of slanesh, even in multiplayer default status. In the Nakari red line, three pips of such sights to show you, grants plus 6 melee attack and plus 12% weapon strength, and secret keeper grants rank 7 keepers, plus 5 leadership, plus 5 melee defense, and bonus versus infantry of plus 7, which certainly aren't bad things. In the tech tree, Pained Feaster at Gr grants plus 2 recruit rank, plus 15 armor piercing flat, and plus 8 charge bonus, which again is doubled with the devastating flanker. But of course, the charge bonus is a modifier to melee attack, and especially weapon strength, so the earlier boost helps. The rest is just adding the missing bound spells and increasing their uses to 2. Granted, no bound spell can be overcast, but if you're asking me about how to use a Keeper of Secrets, well, despite not being a Lore of Change, and those fly, and that's nice. You're getting a Lore of Slanesh spellcasting machine with very adequate single entity brawling ability, lots of speed, and impressive leadership for something of its ilk. Yes, it's also really flimsy for its ilk, but if you're comparing to, let's say, a Bloodthirster, then its added value depends greatly upon your esteem for the Lore of Slanesh and its evil and corrupt uses. Well, that includes some buffs and debuffs, a bunch of damage dealing stuff, including a wide area bombardment great for weakening a blob the Keeper itself forms, plus lots of ability to be only slightly behind the cavalry, running around and hitting vulnerable positions. Plus, it's not dependent on Winds of Magic, nor does it detract from your wins. I feel like it can be useful. I also feel like they feared making it too powerful, or the shielding would be stronger. Clearly, having it stand out while Archer's Mass Fire is begging for disintegration. You need to abuse the mobility and find a way to dictate the engagement. Finally, you have a faction full of tricks to manipulate the melee battle, even down to Hell Scourges having poison. It's only by seeing the Keeper as part of the whole, and not as an individual, when you truly unlock the secret of using it in battle. Take care, and have fun acquiring that redline buff for the boss versus infantry to help when you have to punch down.